Through the uh, 40s, we stayed in radio in various means. There was, uh, during the war, we did a show that was Meet Your Navy out of the Great Lakes Training Sta Naval Training Station, their band. It was marvelous. And then we got into Dramatic Fair on radio and uh, produced two or three different types of shows in the late 40s that ran into the early 50s. Um, a half hour up to an hour television drama or a radio drama. Um, good shows. Um, along about 1950 or 51, we had an interview show with Sarah Churchill, who was a, a person that Dad had become quite well acquainted with and, uh, and with her father, Winston Churchill, at that point. And uh, she did a good job. Nervous as could be, but did a good job on television. Interviewed some wonderful people. It was Hallmark Presents, and I think that's right, Hallmark Presents or Churchill. Sometime around the, the early 50s, we were involved in, um, in television. We had uh, a dramatic, I can think of two different dramatic series that we had. We had one that was, uh, that was uh, narrated and kind of... Uh, overseen by Lionel Barrymore, which was interesting, and he did a good job for us for a number of years. Um, but we had a, had a series of very good uh, dramatic shows at one time. It was a weekly thing, I think an hour long, and they were doing quite well. They were, they were good shows. Uh, long about uh, that time, we decided that um, they should be continued, but on the other hand, a great opportunity game gave, came to my father and brought to him by our advertising agency, Foot Conan Building, uh, that had been offered by NBC. It was to produce a, an opera, a live opera on television, an original by Minotti, um, and uh, they uh, asked Dad if he'd like to do it. It was a it was uh, to be produced in December, and they selected Christmas Eve. And of course, there was very little logics to promoting greeting cards for sale on Christmas Eve. But in any event, he thought it might be a good, good thing to do, and decided to do it. It was our first venture in what we now call the Hallmark Hall of Fame. Uh, what was the name of the program? Amal and the Night Visitor. And uh, it was repeated again the next spring for Easter, and I think seven different broadcasts of the same show. And in fact, when we stopped sponsoring it, other people picked it up, and they would get credit for it. It was kind of kind of nice. That's good kind of sponsorship. Uh, give, give us a sense of what what the what, what it was about. Describe the story, basic story. Story was a. a a boy that had an injured leg, leg and uh, his family, and the story of his gift to uh, the Christ child, and it was a, it was a very heart rendering story by opera. And although I think opera was certainly not a great public popularity winner, it. Uh, the story itself was done very well and very warm, and we had very excellent reaction to it. Where were you um, uh, when the first um, presentation happened? Well, the Somal and the Night Visitor. At that time, I happened to be in service, and I think I was, uh, I think I was in uh, Indianapolis at the finance school. But I think, and I got to see it. But then. Uh, I went to Japan and was out of contact with the, the beginning of the Hall of Fame. But it must have been a, a proud moment to see the company's name up there as a sponsor. Well, that's it was, although we, have, uh, we had been up there and sponsoring the other television shows, and I was pretty proud of those, too. The fourth presentation of the Mall of the Night Visitors was presented in color. Talk about that a little bit. Well, that was the first color national color, uh, color television program, and uh, 
it was kind of marvelous to be the first. It was, it was in the history books, it's the first sponsored uh, color program ever, ever, ever. Right. And it's, that's, that was thrill. The color was not as good as it is today, <laughs> but it was, it was quite, it was, it was interesting and quite unusual for, for people. 